Hey guys, it's Dr. Daniel Sugai, board certified dermatologist in the Seattle area. It is almost summer and I'm so excited, so ready to go out and hit up the beach. The beach in Hawaii at least. The beaches here in Washington are not like Hawaii beaches and I grew up taking the Hawaii beaches for granted. I thought all the beaches in the world were like that, but it's very different up here. When I moved to Boston, I was like, this is a beach. And now I'm here in Seattle. My kids think ducks swim on beaches. And when we go to Hawaii and they're on the nice, beautiful tropical beach, like, where are the ducks? Really excited for some water play with my kids who are now learning how to swim and just really busting out all of the sunscreen to protect yourself, the UPF clothing. That's great because you can have different grades of UPF clothing, the, the highest grade being UPF 50 plus, and that really will block out 98% of the UV rays when you step outside. Sunscreen takes about 15 to 20 minutes to fully set in your epidermis, whereas your clothing, your fabric with UPF just instantly starts working. And Costco, good job to you for always having UPF clothing this time of year. So great to go to Costco and shop around with your nice sun shirts, your workout shirts. I bought a few the other day that are UPF 30 and great workout shirts that are very affordable. So thanks Costco for that. But let's talk about summer skincare and I wanted to just jump into it, how it changes. So, you know, when we were in the winter time, very cold, my skin's much more dry, sensitive. You got the heaters on, pulling out all the moisture from your face. You wake up with dry chap lips, dry face. You gotta work on moisturizer for sure. Summertime, very different. I wake up and I have the AC on. Thankfully I have AC now in Seattle, but you know, you can wake up with a pretty grimy, gross face, and at least I do, and you are dealing with a higher UV index, longer days, so you gotta really be careful with sunscreen because we're gonna be doing a lot more outdoor activities, whether it's water play, I like to go for runs this time of year, and I'm out doing five mile runs. Now I'm starting already in uh, late April, and so I'm really gearing up for summer, and I'm gonna be continuing my running routine at least one to two times a week gotta be really careful with the sun and also busting out that water resistant sunscreen because that does make a difference. Now terminology behind water resistance is you can't use sweat proof, waterproof. Those are all terms that we cannot use on US sunscreens. It's water resistance either 40 or 80 minutes. You'll see that disclosed on the label of the bottle with the SPF and we can pretty much all assume this nowadays that they're broad coverage, they're blocking UVA and UVB, they're chemical sunscreens or mineral sunscreens. I don't like to demonize chemical sunscreens, but this time of year, I might be seeing people with sensitive skin reacting to their chemical ingredients, especially avobenzone, which is very labile in the sun, can break apart, the byproducts can cause irritation or even an allergy in the sun. And so I'm seeing a little bit more of that in clinic as we get sunnier weather. Now, I never want to demonize chemical sunscreens. I use it for myself too. And it just blends in very well. It's lightweight, doesn't cause a white cast like mineral sunscreen. So um, I'll be talking about some of my favorite sunscreen picks this year, uh, this season that are water resistant. And then also how we change up our skincare routine as our skin's much oilier when we wake up from uh, first thing in the morning and how we end our bedtime routine. And we'll talk about the question of, do I have to stop my retinoid topically during the summertime and we'll jump into that at the end okay all right summertime skincare so let's take you to my sample closet and kind of go through good skincare products that you can use in the summer when you have oilier skin you can use something that's a foaming formulation that's better in removing excess oil so i like la roche posay's tolerian foaming cleanser very good, very affordable. Think about 15 to 20 bucks for that, lasts forever. If you wanna go for um, CeraVe, also very popular brand, of course. Their foaming uh, cleanser is awesome, but it can be tricky to find at the store at times. They sell out very quickly. Morning, if you're feeling like you're really grimy, very oily, greasy, you can wake up and do a foaming cleanser. Uh, then you can go ahead and use a vitamin C serum. For that, you can use a lightweight moisturizer, and I'll talk about some good lightweight moisturizers by La Roche-Posay. And then after the moisturizer, use a sunscreen. And here I have my lineup of La Roche-Posay, and you guys know that I like 
their sunscreens quite a bit. This is all mineral. It does have a little bit of a white cast, but I don't mind that one at all. I like it a lot. It has hyaluronic acid and it's um, just great for as an everyday sunscreen. The Anthelios 50 has been my favorite for the last two to three years. And um, that's all mineral, the tinted and non-tinted uh, forms. And then this Mineral 50 is water resistant 80 minutes. Also a really nice one. The Melt and Milk 100 is super nice. I like that for my body, it comes in a bigger size. I think I have a sample, or I think I have the full size in my office. And at the end of the day, you wanna wash your face. I like to wash my face because it's much oilier with something with benzoyl peroxide. This is a great one from CeraVe, Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. They also make a nice salicylic acid cleanser, the SA, or even their, um, they got a new one that looks very similar to this. And I can show you that later. Uh, going back to sunscreen, just know that CeraVe does make sunscreens that are uh, mineral based. They have an SPF 30, uh, SPF 30 tint. And I say that 30 is just too much of a white cast. I love CeraVe, it has great uh, ingredients like ceramides, niacinamide, I believe it also has hyaluronic acid, but too much of white cast, I go with the, the tinted formulation instead. And then after you're done with your cleanse, you can use a lightweight moisturizer like CeraVe PM is nice. You know, what I usually do, you know, I wash my face in the shower, wash my body if I, if I worked out, then go ahead and apply your retinoid when your skin's dry. So I wait about in 30 to 60 minutes and then I go ahead and apply my Tretinoin or Retin-A at bedtime or my over-the-counter retinol. So just a pea-sized amount to the entire face at bedtime onto dry skin. So once you waited about 30 to 60 minutes after you get out of the shower, you can apply your pea-sized amount of this. And then you can apply your moisturizer after that to prevent any irritation. And I like CeraVe PM lotion. You could do uh, La Roche-Posay's, uh, you know, Oh, here's the vitamin C. Uh, their, their facial moisturizer, their Tolarian moisturizer is nice. Um, the Tolarian Double Repair Face Moisturizer is great. Um, going back to the vitamin C, this vitamin C is, is really nice by La Roche-Posay. It's 10% ascorbic acid. The my only critique is that it, it, it does smell a little strongly. Um, which I don't care for. I do. I don't mind fragrance, but it does smell a little bit strongly, and it does um, oxidize pretty quickly. So that's my critique of it. Otherwise, I love the brand. Then you go to sleep, and if you you know want another mo facial moisturizer uh, recommendation, I like Vanna Cream's Daily Facial Moisturizer a lot. It is very affordable, and it's on the lightweight side. It's very much like a lotion almost. Want something also lightweight? The Hydra Boost Gel Cream by Neutrogena is a big winner too. The gel cream uh, versus the water gel. The gel cream has no fragrance or dyes, um, but both really nice and lightweight, great for the summertime. That gel moisturizer texture is really great when your skin's on the oilier side. Uh, in terms of sunscreen, also great for the body and for kids. Uh, Blue Lizard, if you get the full size, the bottle does change color in the sunlight, which is the bottle cap does change color in the sunlight, just reminding you that you need sunscreen at the moment. Very good uh, mineral sunscreens, water resistant. You can see here, 80 minutes for the sensitive. I featured this one on the Today Show. The Sport is SPF 30 and water resistant 80 minutes. So great sunscreens for the kids or for yourself, especially when covering up your body for going to the beach or the pool. Oh, another great benzoyl peroxide wash. Panoxyl, I'm all for. This is a 10% stronger than the CeraVe. This is only 4%. The 10% is stronger, so a higher risk of irritation, but I like to wash my body with the stronger um, benzoyl peroxide at times too. But be careful, make sure to wash off your benzoyl peroxide well because it can cause bleaching of your clothes, your towels. So make sure you rinse it off very well. And if you're leave, doing a leave-on benzoyl peroxide um, medication, like the La Roche-Posay Effaclar Duo, make sure you're wearing a white t-shirt because it will bleach your clothes or your pillowcases. It can do that. And so make sure your this medicine is completely dry before lying down on a pillow. Thanks for going through my sample closet and we'll jump into talking more about skincare.
Here's the Anthelios 100. You can see here it's a three fluid ounce or 90 milliliter box. Very good to have um, for your body. It is chemical based. It has avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene. So just keep that in mind. This isn't like the Anthelios 50 mineral. This one has um, chemical UV filters, which is fine. But if you have a known sensitivity to uh, chemical UV filters, then that one's a no-go. It's the Elta MD UV Shear. Amazing stuff. Very good. On the newer side, it has octocrylene and zinc oxide. So very similar hybrid feel to it, like the UV Clear. UV Clear is zinc oxide and octanoxate. So lightweight, blends in very well, no white cast. But this one's different from the UV Clear because it has water resistant grading to it. It's 80 minutes, so this is good for working out or going to the pool. Sunscreen by LTMD, the UV Restore is nice. And uh, you can see it says tinted, or the UV Elements is very popular. It's like a BB cream uh, because it's so tinted, it kind of hides all blemishes. This one has squalane, which is soothing, and it can also be moisturizing and hydrating. So squalane is very much um, popular right now. Discovered by Biosance. This brand seems really nice and everyone's talking about it. So I, I've had some FOMO, so I finally got my hands on their sunscreen, which is completely mineral based. And I wanna show you guys how it looks later, but I don't know how they were able to do a zinc oxide only sunscreen and be very lightweight. Kind of reminds me of how Coco Kind did it. Um, they were able to make an SPF 30 zinc based sunscreen and make it very lightweight and avoiding that significant white cast. I really like the simple ingredient list and this has squalane, they're what they're known for, and the zinc oxide. And this one is a SPF 30 with PA3 plus. I don't see a water resistance grade on this. So it's more of a everyday type of sunscreen that you put on and not working out. Uh, similar to Coco Kind Daily SPF 32. Wanted to show you some of the bigger products, uh, the trade sizes. You got the Salicylic acid, the 2% salicylic acid wash by CeraVe. This is great for summertime because you wanna have that beta hydroxy acid go down in the pore and clean it out. This one also has hectorite clay and niacinamide, helps absorb that oil, and the niacinamide helps regulate that oil. So really nice uh, cleanser I've been using more recently. There are CeraVe SA I've been using longer, and that one's a great one to do. Um, in the summertime as well. This this one can be hard to find at the store. CeraVe's Acne Foaming Cream Cleanser. This one you can find at Target at times, but it can be sold out very readily. I like that it has 4% benzoyl peroxide, which is a great sweet spot. You can go up to 10%, which is fine. I like to use that for my body, but for the face, you might wanna go with a lower percentage of benzoyl peroxide, less irritating. But this one is nice because it also has niacinamide, the three essential ceramides plus hyaluronic acid. So that's it and it's full size. A little goes a long way with that. Another full size uh, product I want to show you. This I am almost out of, but I love using this. Tolarian Purifying Foaming Cleanser on summer days when I'm especially oily. This foaming cleanser is very nice and fairly affordable. La Roche-Posay, great brand. So this one I'm gonna need to re-up. Um, I wish Costco would have this in a two pack. That would be so awesome. Cetaphil cleansers. Now you see two different types of Cetaphil cleansers. They look very similar. It's a new look, but they're very similar in appearance. The daily facial cleanser is probably better for those with combination of oily skin. But if you don't like fragrance, this has masking fragrance. You can still use a gentle skin cleanser. This is meant for more dry uh, to normal skin. Uh, sensitive skin, no masking fragrance in this. They both have the pro vitamin B5 or panthenol. It's both, they both have niacinamide and glycerin, uh, but this one uh, is intended more for oily skin and that's what we're talking about in this video. So I'm using both, but I've been using much more of the gentle skin cleanser. I showed you my sample closet, Blue Lizard. This is what the full size looks like. This is the SPF 50 sensitive and the cap does change color in the sunlight. This one is five fluid ounces, so it's great for um, face and you have enough for your body as well. I use this for my kids and you see on the ingredient list, it's only zinc and titanium dioxide, water resistant 80 minutes, which is what you want for a hot summer day when you wanna work out or play at the pool or beach. So check this one out for sure. You can get this at Target or Amazon. Now let's get into sunscreens and I wanna 
not talk too much about all the sunscreens I wanna, you know, that I've recently discovered, but I'm gonna do a separate YouTube video on these great sunscreens I've recently discovered. Uh, one that comes to mind would be Coco Kynes Silk SPF that came out recently. It's a hybrid, it has zinc oxide and homosalate. So very cool sunscreen that rubs in very well. Uh, you get the benefit of the lightweight texture of homosalate. Plus you got the zinc oxide UVA one and two and UVB protection. So this goes on very nicely. It's lightweight. Nice color. This is mom's favorite color. Like I mentioned before for Mother's Day, I got to get her a bottle when I visit home soon. Oh, well, there you go. Very nice. No white cast there. This one isn't water resistant, just more for like everyday use without uh, working out, sweating, or playing the water. So just a, um, just keep that in mind. One that is purely mineral that I thought was really nice and lightweight is Biosance. I just started using this uh, this brand recently. And I've been surprised. I've been actually impressed uh, by their products. So this one is their Squalane Plus Zinc Sheer. Just put a small amount. And the question would be, what's the why would you go with chemical versus uh, why would you go with chemical versus mineral? And the answer would be, it's really up to you. If you're pregnant or you're a kid, I usually recommend physical sunscreens, meaning mineral base, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. The other word would be inorganic UV filters are the mineral based sunscreens. You know, th there's no evidence of it being dangerous. Talked about, oh, nanoparticles, nano size, zinc oxide, titanium, potentially could be dangerous, but going through the literature, I don't see any evidence of it being dangerous. I'd say mineral sunscreen is great for everyone, especially if you have sensitive skin. If you have rosacea, you might want to stick with mineral sunscreens because when you have rosacea, you're already in the ultra sensitive bucket, I always tell my patients. So if you have, you can use chemical sunscreens because they're lighter weight than uh, zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. And so if you're skin of color, you might want to go with something more chemical based because those don't leave a white cast commonly. And those are like oxybenzone, octanoxate, octocrylene, avobenzone, homosalate. Those are lighter weight and you might see people love them. And I, I use them a lot. But for those with sensitive skin though, you can get allergies, sensitivities to those chemical UV filters, uh, especially with those that can cause, you know, that can break apart and be labile in the sun. Like avobenzone, UVA can break up avobenzone and thus lead to those byproducts causing rashes, swelling. You might get a swollen red face with a red neck and chest while being in the sun from able benzoyl break, breaking apart. Um, you just gotta be careful of those things if you have really sensitive skin. And if you do, just stick with the mineral sunscreen. We'll be seeing things with hybrid though, hybrid sunscreens. Like one of my favorites recently been Ultem the UV Sheer. This one's a hybrid. This is zinc oxide with octocrylene. And its sister sunscreen, the UV Clear, is very nice, and that's a hybrid as well. Zinc oxide with octanoxate. And that's the hybrid is because you get the zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is a great UV filter. It blocks UVA and UVB very well, but you also get the lightweight texture from a uh, chemical sunscreen, and so it doesn't leave that white cast, and that's why I really like UV Sheer and UV Clear. The, the other hybrid we just talked about was the Coco Kine Silk. You know, I'm, I like those a lot. It kind of brings the best of both worlds, the UV chemical uh, sunscreen ingredients being lightweight, adds additional UV coverage, plus you have the great awesome zinc oxide, uh, which is a great foundation for blocking UVA and UVB. And you don't have to have too many chemicals in it that could potentially cause uh, allergies or sensitivity. So that's a nice mixture or a nice compromise uh, of two worlds. So check those out. I don't want you worrying about chemical sunscreens because right now there's no evidence that they are dangerous. I talk about the, chemo the coral reefs being damaged and that is really unfortunate if it is true in real life that the sunscreens on our body are hurting our coral reefs because um, obviously from Hawaii, me being from Hawaii, always want to respect the aina and not bleach our coral reefs. But these are laboratory studies that are showing that if you pump a lot of chemical ingredients over coral reefs, yes, they will be bleached and damaged and not good for our coral reefs health. But 
is it really, are we wearing enough sunscreen and is it enough coming off our bodies in the ocean to cause that damage? Unclear in the real world settings, but for now, Hawaii has banned the sales of sunscreens with octanoxate or oxybenzone, and they're gonna be going after other UV chemical or other chemical UV filters. Although when I'm there in Hawaii, the selection of sunscreen is pretty sad. They need to really broaden their sunscreen selection. If they're gonna keep cracking down on, on chemical UV filters, they're gonna have to get more options on the islands. Waikiki is all the same generic uh, sunscreens. Let's talk about real quick uh, some moisturizers during the summer. You want something lightweight. I recently talked about Kiehl's uh, Ultra Facial Cream, but also their oil-free gel cream is really nice. I like that uh, a gel cream a lot, and that's great for the summertime when my skin's um, oilier. You want something lighter weight before going to bed. In addition to that, I wanted to mention La Roche-Posay's uh, Tolarian Double Repair Matte Moisturizer. This one, I did partner with La Roche-Posay recently. This is not a paid shout out in any way, but I did work with them as a partnership for a Instagram, TikTok, and I've been impressed with this one because I like their Tolarian line a lot, but if you wanted to uh, check this one out, let me know because it's a very lightweight cooling uh, matte moisturizer that won't add to the oiliness of your skin. And usually I would apply this before the sunscreen, but I'm just for the demonstration purposes, I'm applying it over my sunscreen. Uh, but typically, yes, apply your moisturizer before your sunscreen. Sunscreen is the last part in your routine. You don't want that dewy finish in the summertime. You don't want to look too greasy and shiny. So check this one out. This one's a good one here. So that those will be my top two picks of 2022 for moisturizer. The Kiehl's Ultra Facial Gel Cream and then the Tolarian uh, Double Repair Matte Moisturizer by La Roche-Posay. All right guys, so hope you guys like this summer skincare video. Hope you guys have a nice summer and let's enjoy the sun. Never, don't have to be a hermit and stay indoors, but go out, have fun in the sun, but wear your hat, UPF clothing, and your sunscreen and reapply every one to two hours. Just before we end the video, I wanted to address, do we have to stop our retinols during the summer? So the answer, as you guess, no. You don't have to stop your retinol during the summer. If you're gonna to go to Hawaii, Florida, Mexico, someplace really sunny, or it's just your nice, perfect Seattle weather in the summertime, which usually happens for like a month, and then we're back to gloomy, dark weather. But during the summer, you don't have to stop. Retinols do not cause phototoxicity or photo allergies. It can make you sensitive to the sun indirectly because you're gonna bring in new skin with increased cell turnover. You're gonna have nice new baby skin. That's that anti-aging component. So you wanna protect that as much as possible. And if you're on oral retinoids and you go on the sun, when you bring in that new skin and get a bad burn while on it and also get really red throughout your isotretinoin course. So be very careful with um, the sun while on an oral retinoid. And if you're doing topical retinoids, just wear your sunscreen during the day while out and about and at bedtime, apply your retinoid so that the sun doesn't deactivate it. There are some photostable retinols that you could do during the day, but I always say, do your vitamin C stuff, sunscreen in the morning and do your retinol retinoids at bedtime. Okay, so just want to address that during the summer. Other things during the summer, you keep up your you know vitamin C game, um, antioxidant game going uh, because that will work very well with your sunscreen. There's a lot of wildfires here in Washington State, Pacific Northwest, so there was a lot of pollutant, pollutants in the air. And so we wanna protect ourselves from that as much as possible uh, during the summer. Of course, if the air quality is too terrible, don't be outside, but in general, I like to have, protect myself from pollution and, and UV radiation during the summer with the vitamin C and always go thinnest to thickest. So after cleansing, I'll apply my vitamin C serum and then apply your sunscreen that's like a moisturizing sunscreen like say Dermatology is very lightweight. Um, another one that I really wanna try out is Eucerin's new sunscreen that's for oily skin. Thank you Eucerin for this. Wear your hat, your broad brimmed hat this summer. New sunscreen line, uh, the oil control has the silica in this to help absorb the oil so it has a more of a matte finish. So I'm looking forward to trying Eucerin's new sunscreens out. So if you have oily skin and you want something a little lighter weight, you can definitely check this out. You know what, let's just bust this open since I have you here. First impressions, ooh, nice. Interesting sound. Very lightweight, ooh, I like that. 
and get some on my face. As that classic sunscreen smell, this is uh, chemical based. So I just put a small amount. It does feel a little thick on the face. So for a chemical sunscreen, this does feel a little thick. But no white cast. I'm just putting a small amount there. I put more on. This has avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene. Use certain products are very affordable, so I'm gonna have to look up the price and put it down below on how much this costs. You know what, it's okay. I'm not loving it, but it's decent. Water resistant, right? So it's SPF 50. They say no oxybenzone or octanoxate, so they, I like that they're not using the term reef safe, because that's not a regulated term but that, those are the two ingredients that are banned in, for sale in Hawaii. So this one probably isn't water resistant. I don't see water resistance here, but this has the 5 Aox Shield technology, which is the five antioxidants in this, which do they disclose, which we like antioxidants in our sunscreens, just the extra goodies. Vitamin E, you got some glycerin, maybe some vitamin C, derivatives but not ascorbic acid um, so you got the glycerin which is hydrating that's further down you got the silica to help absorb the, um, the oil and make more of a matte finish so yeah I mean we have th this is this is actually an okay sunscreen I'm not blown away by it yeah it's a really nice color though I like that color scheme there I've always liked the orange and green color scheme Okay, so I'm gonna have to think about this a little bit more before I give this a thumbs up or I give it a rating, give it a Dr. Sugai rating, but it's all right, it's okay. So I'm gonna keep using it this summer and let you guys know. Hope you like this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe to the channel, I'll see you guys next time. Have a great summer, peace.